ABC Action News starts right now with breaking news. And now at 6, tragic breaking news yet again out of Orlando. The search is on right now for a toddler snatched by an alligator at a Disney resort. A cruise rushed on scene just after this happened overnight. So far, no sign of that toddler, even after an all-night search. ABC Action News reporter Corey Dudorf is on the scene right now near where this happened. He's at the Seven Seas Lagoon by the Grand Floridian Resort. And uh, Corey, I know you've been keeping in touch with investigators uh, this morning. Have they given you any indication uh, on where the search is right now. Yeah, guys, we're waiting on that update right now for that indication of where that search is. You can see behind me, lots of media here from all over the country already in town covering the Orlando tragedy, now covering this this morning. We're just a little ways away from the search area. It's not too far behind us, and that's where they are still searching for this gator and this two-year-old boy. We're expecting that press uh, conference here in about 25 minutes, and the Orange County Sheriff tells us the family vacationing from Nebraska was hanging out in a small beachy area near the pool at Seven Seas Lagoon at around 9.30 last night. Their two-year-old son was splashing in about a foot of water near the shoreline when an alligator lunged and grabbed the child, dragging him into the water. The boy's father jumped into the water and tried to grab his son, but he wasn't able to wrestle him away from the gator. The sheriff's office says the boy's mother may also have tried to jump into the water to help. Right now, dozens of rescuers are still out here searching for the boy in the gator. The Orange County Sheriff's Office tells me they haven't had any complaints of nuisance gators in the area before. And as you can see behind us, that very large presence of uh, media from all over the country here covering this story. And we'll be bringing you that press update live on air at around 625. Live in Orange County this morning, Corey Jodorf, ABC Action News. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Corey. And of course, we'll be keeping you up to date on this story as investigators continue to search that area. If you haven't already, make sure you download our mobile app. We'll send out any push alerts with any new information that we find out. And you can also check for updates on abcactionnews.com and expect another live report from that scene in about 30 minutes. Just absolutely tragic news, though. Right now, though, we do want to get you prepared for your day with a look at traffic and weather together. Ivan is here now with our forecast. Yeah, and it's still hot and humid out there. Temps in the low 80s right now. or 75 uh, in Bartow, though, so a little better away from the water where it's 87. It feels like 87 uh, in St. Pete. By later this afternoon, we'll talk about a few showers and thunderstorms. The coverage, I still think, like yesterday, will be limited and will be mainly across our interior here with about 30% coverage. Otherwise, uh, along the coast with the west, when everything gets pushed to the east, so we'll be uh, in better shape as we head to later on. Uh, today, rain chances do increase the next uh, few days, so we'll talk about that uh, coming up. We'll check the tropics uh, again. But uh, for now, let's head over to the traffic center, and here's Joe. Yeah, we do have a serious crash. This is going to be uh, in the St. Pete area, so we have a, a road closure to tell you about due to this crash. Westbound 5th Avenue, right at 49th Street North. The westbound lanes are blocked while crews are out there investigating trying to figure out exactly what happened. Your alternate is going to be a central right here. Um, I'll keep you posted on exactly what's going on. I'll let you know as soon as this clears because this could be a problem for the morning commute. Elsewhere uh, in the Bay Area, we're in pretty good shape. Checking out your drive through the Brandon area. This is I-75 right at the Leroy Selman Expressway. A lot of you will be hopping on the Selman right here to get into downtown. That drive is taking just seven minutes right now. And a quick check of the average speeds on 75 and 275 heading south into Tampa, both in the green. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, Janelle. And it's been three days since a gunman killed 49 people at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando. We're getting a closer look now at the crime scene of the worst mass shooting in U.S. history. ABC Action News reporter Ashley Yor is in Orlando right now with a look at the aftermath at Ground Zero for this horrific tragedy. Up until this point, we've only been able to see the Pulse nightclub sign. Now some of those barricades are coming down. We're only about a block from where that tragedy happened. And you can see still a massive law enforcement presence out here this morning. Orlando Health says six patients are still in the ICU. One or two of them are, in their words, profoundly ill. And doctors worry about their long-term care. Yesterday, we heard from trauma medical experts who credit the hospital's location just four blocks from the nightclub with helping, helping them save lives. 44 patients came to their doors, and they were able to save 35 of them. Many remain in the hospital this morning with various injuries. Later today, Orlando's mayor says they're going to be opening an assistance facility for family members, helping them with counseling, travel plans, and funeral arrangements. The first responders will open up about their rescue efforts. Also this morning, we expect to hear from lawmakers about tactical plans to prevent future tragedies like this one. 
And President Obama will be arriving here tomorrow morning, consoling the families of those 49 victims lost entirely too soon. Reporting from Orlando, I'm Ashley York, ABC Action News. All right, thank you, Ashley. And the ex-wife of shooter Omar Mateen is urging people not to come to an early conclusion on a motive for that weekend massacre. Satoria Yusufai told CNN last night in an interview that Mateen was unstable and prone to emotional outbursts while they were together, but she says that she never heard him express any radicalism. Investigators say they haven't ruled out charging others in Sunday's attack. They say they're looking into whether anyone had advanced knowledge of the attack, including the gunman's current wife. This is video of Noor Salman as police escort her out of her apartment. She told the FBI her husband said that he wanted to carry out a jihadist attack, but she denied knowledge of his plans to target Pulse nightclub and shoot more than 100 people. Investigators say Mateen visited Pulse in early June and his wife went with him. Meanwhile, cell phone tower data tracked Mateen in the hours before the shooting. Investigators say he spent several hours at Disney Springs, a shopping and entertainment center. Law enforcement sources also say he went there in early June. Trips investigators think were used to scout out locations. Salman married Omar Mateen in 2011. They have a three-year-old son together. And the Bay Area is honoring one of its local victims in that Orlando massacre this morning. A vigil for Chris Sanfeliz is planned for 8 until 10 p.m. at Gaither High School on their football field here in Tampa. He graduated from that school. Everybody is welcome to come out and remember him and also the rest of the victims in this attack. ABC Action News, of course, was there last night as Christopher's family and his friends gathered at St. Pete Beach to begin to say their goodbyes. The crowd remembering him as loving and intelligent beyond his years. Sam Valiza's parents moved from Cuba to Tampa in the 1960s. Christopher's friends were in too much pain to speak, and the breeze kept them from launching their sky lanterns out over the Gulf. But the crowd says despite that wind, his memory will continue to burn bright in their hearts. In Orlando, more assistance and help for a community still hurting right now. During the citywide prayer service that you're looking at right there, the city's mayor, Buddy Dyer, announced last night that families can go to Camping World Stadium for counseling, uh, help with travel, and any other services that they may need right now. Those services start today. Our crews were there last night as the mayor, religious leaders, and also community leaders gathered at First Baptist Church. They wanted to send a message of love, unity, support, and strength. We believe that there is power in prayer, and we believe that Orlando is a very beautiful, lovely place to live, and it has been invaded. First Baptist Church is offering free funeral services for every victim of Sunday's shooting. Meanwhile, another young victim was honored at a service in Orlando. A separate shooting last Friday left 22-year-old Christina Gremmie dead after a performance at the Plaza Live Theater. The former contestant on NBC's The Voice was killed. Police say the shooter, Kevin James Loibel of St. Petersburg, killed himself after Gremmie's brother tackled him. A viewing for Grimmy will be held on Friday, a memorial service later that night near her New Jersey hometown. Adam Levine, who is a coach on The Voice, is offering to pay the funeral cost uh, and also uh, Christina Grimmie's mother's travel expenses. Levine was Grimmie's coach on The Voice when uh, she was on the show on, uh, for season six. She was a finalist in season six. So to come on ABC Action News this morning, the last of the primaries over and done with. We're adding up where that leaves the candidates this morning in the presidential race. And some tragic breaking news right now. A two-year-old boy is missing after an alligator dragged him into a lagoon near a Walt Disney World Resort. We're going to hear the Orange County Sheriff explain what the parents did uh, the minute it happened. ABC Action News is once again on the scene of tragic breaking news in Orlando. More than 50 officials are searching right now for a two-year-old boy dragged into a lagoon by an alligator near Disney's Grand Floridian Resort. This happened around 9.30 last night. There's been no sign of that child since. The father uh, entered the water and uh, he tried to uh, uh, grab the child. Uh, was not successful in doing so. Uh, at some point, I'm told that the mother also may have entered the water. So the parents uh, diligently tried to uh, get the child. His family is from Nebraska. They were in Orlando on vacation. We'll bring you any breaking updates as soon as we get them. We're checking in constantly with our crew live on the scene right now.
In Democracy 2016, the primary season officially over this morning. Hillary Clinton won yesterday's primary in the District of Columbia, but we still don't know what her final delegate total will be. That's because 84 delegates still had not been awarded to either Sanders or to Clinton. The two Democrats met privately last night for 90 minutes to discuss how they can unify the party and defeat Donald Trump. We'll have much more on the presidential race coming up at 6.45. So steam around their temps in the upper 80s to eventually low 90s today with a heat index around 100 degrees. 20% coverage for afternoon showers and storms. I'll break that down for you coming up next.